this morning. We are very lucky to have Mr. Sid Burks returning. Uh, Sid has been a pilot and educator for more than 40 years now, recently retired from the California Community College System as an instructor and administrator. He's now on the faculty of Cal State San Bernardino, teaching career technical education at their Palm Desert campus. And as you all are familiar, he's an avid student of military aviation and desert history. And so we're really looking forward to his presentation today. Sid. Thank you, Kelly. Can you hear me? Does this work? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, thank you. Uh, this is the third time I've presented to this group. Maybe I'll get it right this time. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get the bicycle? Okay. And we're here today to talk about the Palm Springs Army Airfield, which morphed into the airport we have now, and also the adjacent Torney uh, Army General Hospital. And to a little bit of the history of airports in Palm Springs. By the way, uh, one of these days I'm going to write a book on all the different airports here in the, in the Coachella Valley. I'm about two thirds of the way through. But uh, anyway, go back. The very, depending on what your definition of an airport is, but the very first airport in Palm Springs was the Great Brothers Landing Strip. Uh, not quite sure when it shut down and sort of overlapped with another one. But this was a dirt strip right by the uh, El, El Mirador Hotel. And that was replaced by Stevens Desert Airport. Stevens was the, actually the founder of the El, El Mirador Hotel. And then that in turn was replaced by Palm Springs Municipal Airport right up into the war. And then in turn we have the Palm Springs Army Airport, Air Base, which today is uh, uh, Palm Springs International Airport. Those are times right there. The yeah, Great Brothers Landing Strip was just a dirt strip, and it was very common at that period of time to have dirt strips near all the uh, upscale resorts, because the only people that could afford airplanes were wealthy men and the military. And if a wealthy person had an airplane, they wanted to take it everywhere they went. So, like I said, in most of the upscale resorts, like uh, El Merlador or the Narconian over in Norco, they would have a dirt strip for the use of their, their guests. Um, the Gray Brothers uh, had some connection to uh, naval aviation in San Diego, and naval aviation cadets would come up and land in Palm Springs, and they'd go into the restaurant and have lunch. Well, the Army aviation cadets from what's now March Field found out about it, and they started coming over too. Problem is, they'd go into the restaurant and start hurling uh, insults to each other. So that wasn't too good for the hotel's business. And Mr. Stevens, who owned the El, El Mirador, uh, complained to the Gray Brothers about the dust and the noise and everything. So one of the Gray Brothers had the aviation cadets from, from San Diego back their airplanes to the hotel and brought them up in you know, full <laughs> <laughs> So Mr. Stevens decided, well, you know, if you can't let them join him. By the way, here's a uh, uh, picture of the dirt strip, a little fuzzy, but from a distance. So he built his own airport in 1929. Uh, had dirt runways, a windsock, two hangars, and the first commercial air service here in the valley. We'll get a little more about that in a second. Uh, here's a picture, you can see the, see the hangars in the background? Here's another picture, the hangars look a little better. Uh, this is interesting, this is a 1929 Airways uh, information about Stevens Airport. Not too much visual reference other than highway, what's now Highway 111. And here's a drawing of the, of the airport. Um, it was fenced off, it had telephone lines and a windsock down at the other end. This contains a lot of information about the airport, including the fact that there's a mechanic on the airport who works for $1.25 an hour. <laughs> um, as I said, they, this airport had the first commercial air service. Uh, it wasn't scheduled. What happens is, if you wanted to get to Palm Springs, you bought a ticket from LA to Tijuana, to the racetrack there, and asked to be dropped off in Palm Springs. <laughs> <laughs> were, uh, Maddox, who, who started this airline, was actually a very uh, successful Lincoln Ford Mercury dealer from Los Angeles. And when the Ford came out with the tri-motors, he, you know, he had to get in the aviation business. And Maddox Airlines actually became TWA later morphed into that. 
There was another operation led by Charles Lindbergh on the East Coast, and the two of them came together to form TWA. Here's a picture of the time schedule. There's a board trimotor taken off from the grass runway down in Tijuana. And this is interesting. This was Maddox Airlines inaugural flight, LA to San Diego. Charles Lindbergh was a pilot. Well, the city of Palm Springs decided that uh, Stevens Airport only benefited Stevens uh, Hotel, the Almerida. So they built a municipal airport, and they leased land in Section 14 from the Indians. And it had two or three runways, depending on which way the wind was blowing. And it was possibly half a mile from where the airport is today. And then when Palm Springs incorporated in 1938, it was renamed Palm Springs Municipal Airport. Here's a picture. This is a hand-tailed linen postcard. You can see the airport right here, dirt runways. And back here is the village of Palm Springs. It's kind of interesting because Palm Springs really owes its uh, fame as a, as a vacation destination to the airlines. Because what would happen was air, airlines couldn't get into the LA Basin because of weather. They divert to Palm Springs. So people found out about Palm Springs because they had to lay over here until the weather cleared. And it said that the, the village of Palm Springs literally grew up around the airport. And so Palm Springs Airlines began. Jack McCochran and the Coachella Valley 99s populated it. And like I said, it was used by American Western and the military for a weather alternate runway. This is a saying from one of the, the old pioneers, basically he's saying that the village grew up around the, the, air, the runway. <clears throat> so the, the decision was made that we needed another airport further away from town because being a, a dirt runway, the dust was always blowing, a lot of noise. So they got a location further away. And 1940, Palm Springs leases lands from the Indians. The Indians at that time couldn't sell their land, they could only lease it. And they began construction in 1941. Well, we all know what happened in 1941. The, the government had decided that Palm Springs was an important location because of the, the use of the weather alternate. Um, but the city began construction, but the government took over. So the city was leasing the land to the Indians, and they in turn leased it to the federal government for the airport, for the Army Airfield. This is a picture of it. And take note of uh, these hard stands or tie downs. The military learned this lesson from, from Pearl Harbor. They didn't bunch the airplanes up, so they're very spread out. All these different, we call them tie downs, they call them hard stands. These are 60 foot diameter concrete pads where they could uh, tie the airplane down. See the two runways. And the mission today at the Army Airfield, most of the problem was sparing aircraft. So you have, you have to remember that more than half of the airplane man, military airplane manufacturing was going on in Southern California. At the same time, there was a, a considerable paranoia over Japanese invasion of the West Coast. So they wanted to get those airplanes out of the coast and somewhere as fast as they could. So as soon as they were done, they'd fly them over the mountains, land in Palm Springs, and then from Palm Springs, they'd go to their final destination, whether it was a flight school, uh, a modification center, because at that time, they didn't do any modifications at the factory. They just made one airplane, and if it needed a modification, it was flown to another uh, center for that modification. Uh, so like I said, there were uh, approximately, I think, eight or nine different manufacturers of aircraft in, in Southern California. They also did some pilot training, and they did air evacuation. When we talk about Torney General Hospital, that was next to the airport, we'll talk some more about that. <coughs> And they also had a weather function. They did a lot of uh, weather forecasting and weather survey at the airport. Also modifications and repair. Here's the different units that were there. This is probably the biggest one, the fairing group. That was part of the Air Transport Command. And you notice here, this was a specialized unit that strictly guarded the airplanes. And I guess one night the, uh, the officers in this unit stood guard so that the enlistment could all go to some function. 
And apparently they did a pretty good job because there wasn't a single airplane that was reported stolen that night. <laughs> <laughs> Here's some other things that went on. There was a, the ferry group also had a whack detachment. This is uh, also associated with the hospital. And then finally, at the wind down of the war, the only thing that's left is the weather function. And they were still moving airport airplanes around, but now they were coming back in instead of going out. Here's a picture. This is McCollum Way, which is now Topkeys. This was actually donated by the daughter of the president <coughs> McCollum. And the GIs called it Main Street. And the historic La, uh, La Paz Guest Ranch was taken over as officer's quarters and a station hospital. Here's another picture of the Army Airfield. And there's the original municipal airport in the background. You see McCollum goes off from this airport to that airport. You see from this drawing location, there's an existing airport. There was the old municipal airport. It was used during World War II as a uh, landing as a place for smaller airplanes like fighters to land. It was also some civilian use. And as soon as the war was over in 1946, it was abandoned. It's all developed now. There's nothing left of it. So in 1946, when the war was over, the, the uh, airport was used for joint military-civilian use. You can see some carrier planes here, some military planes, and civilian aircraft over here. So everybody was using it at the end of the war, after the war. What's left today? Well, remember those hard stands I was talking about?
specific. He also did physical therapy and talked about the volunteers. Here's a GI spoken and joking with a volunteer from Shade. Um, soldiers got to the hospital several ways by specific aircraft. Remember that air evacuation unit I mentioned at the, uh, at the airfield? That was strictly to go around and pick up wounded GIs and bring them back to the hospital. But they also came by train and motor ambulance. The, uh, the military had a very nice large pool and they used that to good use for water therapy for the GIs. Here, uh, looks like a game room to me, but they call it rehab room. <laughs> and these are some of the units that were assigned there. This is interesting because they had approximately 250 Italian POWs that served as the hospital orderlies, mechanics, cooks, etc. And from all I can find out, they were much happier to be here with us than they were in North Africa with the Germans. <laughs> they seem to get along well with everybody. So the 20, almost 30 acres that the El Rodor included all these units and they had their own post office and bank. And then the government spent another $4 million, pick up 111 acres, and added all of these things right here, including the POW stockade. You can see this is a uh, drawing. That's the original <coughs> hotel right here, and all of this was added. This is an uh, aerial photo of the same thing. So all these are either hospital wards or barracks. And a lot of these were barracks for the GIs that were from the airfield. The hospital was actually turned over to the Army Air Forces in 1943. So it became sort of a, a joint use. And the whole thing was turned over to, when the end of the war was turned over to the uh, works there, Federal Works Administration. It was operated as a hotel uh, until about 1972. The um, classic tower actually burned down. And a lot of people think it's the original tower, but it's not. It was basically reproduced using the same plans as the original tower, and they even used some of the components from the original tower in the new one. And that, if you're not familiar, is right behind the uh, Desert Regional Medical Center today. So that's my presentation. So if there's any questions, I'd be glad to answer. No, no, the uh, Indians were finally allowed to sell the land and the city purchased it. So it's not any land anymore. The law changed. Do you have any questions? Okay. Now, Palm Springs International Airport, it's, it's grown so yeah. much. Uh, there are over 2 million passengers a year now at the Palm Springs International Airport, which is a milestone. One thing that's the greatest thing about the airport is they have the only friendly TSA people out there in the Do you have any information on airplane crashes or any of the, during the training phase or any of that kind of stuff in, at the airport or in the area? Uh, yeah, I have a book. There's several. Uh, I don't, not off the top of my head, I don't have any information, but there's a book that lists some crashes, both military and civilian. And I do, there's another section to this on the WASP that talks about uh, the losses at the WASP. Yes, sir. What year was the uh, present Terminal 1 circular uh, space? I don't know, maybe. Can you answer that? That's a question. The, the circular terminals, what year was it? 1999, I think that was the first one. Or the late 90s. I remember the old days where you walk out there in the open air for your plan. Yep. It was pretty nice. <laughs> Anything else? What is it? What's that? Well, that old airfield was that they showed that it was just mm -hmm. what I'm not familiar with Palm Springs, but what is that area called now? Well it's downtown Palm Springs. <laughs> <laughs> you go you go right up top weeks about a half a mile from the airport, that's where it was. Yes sir. <laughs> I'd just like to share my father uh, share a story with me that he was flying a fleet from Phoenix to Los Angeles. It was a uh, And he tried to get through the Vandy Pass, uh, and the winds exceeded his airspeed. 